Well, the forecast isn't the best. I think we're going to probably end up fighting 30 mile an hour winds today at some point. And so if the audio is bad in this video, we apologize. You know, it's pre-spawn walleyes this time of year. It's spring walleyes, I can't think of a better place than Green Bay. And so driving across Wisconsin in four wheel drive at about 30 miles an hour pulling a boat it was a little treacherous, but we're here. Everything's a filthy mess as far as our equipment, our boat and everything. But uh, goodness, there's no place I'd rather be. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Jason, this is a, a great area for big walleyes and we're in prime time right now. So let's go get oh, some. One of the best times of the year, ain't it? And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and in side image. The side imaging is a very useful and valuable tool in this type of situation you know you're in like right now we're in 12 feet of water you know we're looking anywhere from say 13 to 7 feet of water is, is a rule of thumb and it's just sand it's just gradual sloping sand and drifts of sand and it's not like there's really prominent structure out here and so when you find fish in that type of bottom i mean they're going to jump out at you they're going to be really visible on side imaging one thing I like to pay close attention to, Jason, is look at how the fish are potted because a lot of times, you, if you see like 50, 60, 70 fish in a group, that's gonna be a big pack of suckers. When you see the smaller packs of fish, like six to 12 fish, those are typically gonna be your walleyes. They'll hang in smaller groups. So pay attention to that. You see the bigger groups of fish, a lot of times that's gonna be your suckers grouped up outside these tribs. The smaller little packs are gonna be your walleyes. There's one. Got him. All right. Why don't you spot lock us here, Jason? Yep, I will. That's the whole deal is we got to find them first, right? Uh, I'm just marking a pile of them right here. Yeah. All right, where are you coming? Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Oh, a nice one. Oh, yeah. Try to slide them right up the back here. Yeah. Got him on the hair. There we go. Nice. Bring him around to your side there. Nice fish, man. Nice start. I'll tell you what, Jason, that's a key point with that side scan right now. I seen those fish and we, we stopped the boat, set up, took one cast and bang, they're there. Yeah. I think side imaging is probably one of the most useful beneficial tools in this part of the world as far as finding these fish on these flats like this. Nice fish. Yeah, that's a good looking fish. One thing if you see, uh, I've got a stinger hook on the back of that hair jig. That's very critical when using hair jigs. A lot of these fish are coming behind the hair jig and just nipping at them. Over 50% of the fish will be on that stinger hook. Well, we got the wind picking up now. <laughs> yeah, wind's supposed to blow up to 25 miles an hour today, so we're just kind of bracing for that. <laughs> uh, one thing when the wind starts blowing is it'll definitely shuffle fish around and they'll set up on some structure spots, so you want to pay close attention to that. Got him. Got him. All right. Spot lock us again? You bet I will. Fish is dogging you a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. See it yet? Yeah, he's getting close. Oh yeah, nice walleye, Brett. Nice walleye. There we go. Nice. Nice work. So you what, last time I took my gloves off, this time I'm leaving them on. My hands are cold. It's cold out here this morning. <laughs> it is cold. Yeah, these fish know it too. They want these hair <laughs> jigs really slow right now. You know, I that's tried... maybe something to point out. I mean, hair jigs are so popular out here. I mean, they work deadly. I'm switching to a hair jig. I mean, I, was, I started off with a plastic just to change things up here a little bit, but 
it's subtle in the water. It's just kind of a do nothing, slow approach. Well, one thing I love is on a hair jig, when these fish get lethargic, you really need to slow stuff down and a hair jig is a perfect presentation yeah. for that. Yeah. Nice. One of the reasons I think the hair jig is such a great tool and works so well is because you can work it several different ways. You can work it kind of like I was today. I was ripping it actually pretty hard, um, getting aggressive with it. There's days when you really got to crawl them and almost drag them as slow as you would a, work in a tube for smallmouth fishing. So it's a very diverse bait. You can work it a lot of different ways. And you know, these fish also, you got to remember, don't only eat minnows and other fish, they also eat bugs. So I, I think a, a hair jig mimics more of like a bug style than, than a minnow style bait. And uh, walleyes will eat a lot of bugs also. Got him. Got him. All right, Brett. Spot lock us. Okay. All right, here it comes, Jason. All right. Decent fish. Come with the net. Oh, that is a chunk. <laughs> that is a fat fish. I'll tell you what, they're making us work for them today a little bit with this cold well, front. I'll tell you what, you are, uh, you are putting on a clinic. I mean, you are catching. I got to figure out what you're doing. I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah, they're just real fussy. They want it a certain way, and that's the only way they want it today. We're marking pretty good fish right here, so we'll get this one back, see if we can get another one. One thing I like to do is when the wind is blowing this hard is I like to keep my rod tip lower towards the water, and it's basically just a pull and a pause technique that I'm doing. And you try to get your cadence going where as soon as it hits the bottom, you give it about a second delay where it's on the bottom, then you're pulling. So it's a pull and a pause. And by keeping your rod tip lower to the, to the water with this wind, you can actually watch that rod tip and see when your bait hits the bottom. And that's pretty critical. There he is. Oh, that's a good fish, Brett. Boy, they just dog you. <laughs> I tell you what, this time of year, <laughs> I don't care how cold it is, being in a boat and swinging at these fish with a long rod feels pretty good. Oh yeah, look at there. Oh, that looks like a nice, nice fish, Jason. Real that's nice a, one. That's a big one there. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh yeah, beauty. Turn. Hey, oh. that, that uh, is a choker, huh? Yeah, wow. that's the one we're looking for. Well, <laughs> I got tired of watching you catch fish, and so what I started doing is watching you. Well, <laughs> See what you're doing. You're catching the right ones, though. I'm catching the smaller ones. <laughs> oh, got it on the stinger. Look at that. <laughs> right in the tip of the lip, that stinger hook. Well, you can just buy these. Northland sells them. You just get the ones with the rubber, red rubber on the end of the stinger hook. That is just gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Whew, that's a nice walleye. All right, we'll get her in the water here. You know, I tell you what, I mean, it's, it's so common. You know, with jig bites especially, where it's a certain touch, a certain cadence, a certain stroke, a certain speed. And invariably, you know, you're going to get in situations where one person's catching fish. And when that happens, like when Brett popped three and I hadn't had a bite yet, I mean, I was watching his speed. I mean, I was watching what he was doing with the rod tip. And I was basically what I was basically just do is you just match up, you know, and tell you what, if you fish enough, you're going to find yourself on the wrong side of the coin sometimes where somebody's catching fish and you're not. Pay attention and see what you can do to match what's working. <laughs> Swallow your pride. <laughs> pride can be a bad thing sometimes with fishing, and so all you got to do is do what works. That's all that matters. I got tired of watching you, Brett. 
<laughs> I got a feel like you've done that to quite a few people over the years. <laughs> Ooh, warm up the hands. And we always love coming out to Green Bay. I mean, there's just so many different opportunities out here. And you know, we've been out here in the past where we've targeted the big smallmouth bass. We've been up in the rivers and out in the bay here catching walleyes. And you look at the quality of fishing, especially with the walleye fishing, the smallmouths, there's a lot of things to do here. What's cool is when you come out here, I mean, you're gonna see really big boats, you're gonna see small boats, but if you use your head, focus on the rivers, you know, stay in shore, you could go out here and you don't necessarily need a big boat to fish some tremendous water. You know, catching fish is all about finding them, you know, and the thing about this is, you know, you take a half hour show and you take a day's worth of fishing, you know, it's just, you know, you're catching all kinds of fish, but the reality is that sometimes this is a grind in the sense that, you know, you're trying different things, you're trying different spots, and you're just making these small moves, trying to find fish, trying to side image fish, and, you know, you're just popping a few fish at a time, and then the fish move, or you have to find some new fish, you wear out, you're welcome, and you're just moving and grooving all the time. But this isn't a deal where you can fall in love with one spot and think you're gonna spend the rest of the day there. These fish are moving. You have to be very nimble and you have to be fluid when you're fishing Green Bay. There I got him. Ooh, that looks like a good one, Jason. Feels like a good one. That feels good. Just want to see it. Should be able to see it here pretty soon. Oh yeah, nice wall. Oh, another nice one. Oh Ooh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's Whoa. a good one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Good job, buddy. <laughs> These are nice fish. I, I, I love this out here. This part of the world just intrigues me. I just I just think this area is so cool. Show this girl off. This is a nice fish. <sighs> Get that deep V jig out of her here. If you love to use hair jigs, which more and more anglers are starting to discover hair jigs, these deep V jigs are just perfect. And the reason I think they're perfect is just because they're tied with a little bit less bucktail where you, you don't want it too thick. You want it thin so it pulsates. There, that is a nice fish. Wow. All right, I'll get her back in the water. You know, these are pre-spawn fish where the water temperatures are still less than 40 degrees and so it's cold out here, cold water. With that being said, you know, probably the most aggressive bait you can use just a rip and wrap, which these catch a lot of fish on Green Bay. You know, especially, you know, they fish well in the current, you can fish them fast, you can find fish, you can trigger a response. But day in and day out, you can't go wrong with, you know, jigs and soft plastics like the eye candy or just classic hair. And I would say with the cold water temps, there's something to be said for hair jigs. It's just very subtle, it pulsates in the water, fishes really well at slow speeds. You know, besides, you know, your traditional classic bucktail, you've also got the Mylar, which has a little bit of tinsel in it. Both these are great options, and, you know, these deep V jigs are tied with the hair. And so both these jigs have that deep V head, cuts through the current really well, has a long shank hook, which I like. And so the deep V jig is a phenomenal jig for walleye, but when you're using these bucktails especially, you know, one thing to do is just get these stinger hook packs that just have that red tab on the end and add that stinger hook on the back of these hair jigs because they just nip at these hair jigs and so a lot of the fish that we've caught today <laughs> they are caught on that back hook. Yeah. Oh you got one? All right! <laughs> Feels like a good one, too. All right, I'll get reeled in here. I'm just gonna get out of the way here. Nice work. 
This is fun. This is a fun way to catch fish too. That one pounded it pretty hard. Good. Yeah, I smacked her good. Yeah, this is definitely a decent fish here. Yeah, this is a good one. Bulldog. Oh, yeah. me. That big, looks like a really big nice head fish. shakes. That looks like a really nice one. Might be the biggest one yet. Oh yeah, nice fish. Oh yeah. Come on, little girl. There we go. Yeah, nice. This is good stuff, huh? Yeah, not, don't get much better than that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you might see that flag at full mast on the shoreline. Think, eh, I don't know if I want to go out here, but I'll it's tell you. Worth it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. A lot of people get intimidated by Green Bay on the size of their boat. We're out here and it's solid three footers, and your boat is handling this perfect. Yeah, well, I think you got to be careful, and you definitely have to respect this, but. You know, especially, you know, we're fishing the calm side too, right? right? So the wind's blowing out of the west. We're along this bank here, and we're along this west shore here where we're out of the wind, as crazy as it sounds. I wouldn't want to be on the other side today. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to go too far from the landing. <laughs> no, no, pick your battles. <laughs> nice fish. What a nice chunker. Boy, they're all fat this time of year. That's what's are, cool about pre-spawn. Nice work. Get her back in the water. I'll tell you what, you get times like this when these fish are chewing, you know, they're hungry and they're finally eating. Not the time you want to take your lunch, it's time you want to fish. So when you get these periods, keep them baits in the water, keep them rolling and catch as many as you can because they're not going to bite all day long. So a lot of times, you know, when you're driving the boat and you're moving forward, you know, you're going to get your optimum display on your side imaging. You can still see fish on side imaging when you're drifting, and then also you can use forward-facing sonar. But, you know, we did a combination of drifting and spot locking in the sense that we drift through areas, try to find some clusters or some pods of fish, and then we'd, we'd spot lock, you know, and, and make a handful of casts, but we didn't spend a lot of time on fish. You know, we would try to find fish. Usually, you know, you'd catch a fish right away if you're going to catch one. And the other thing to remember, too, is that sometimes you could very well be, you know, seeing suckers especially. I mean, the number of suckers that run up these rivers is staggering. And so, you know, you find fish, you drift through them, you make some casts. If you find something that looks better, you can spot lock. But the biggest thing is you're probably not going to be able to spot lock for very long because you just got to keep moving. You got to keep contacting fresh pods of fish. One thing when you're throwing like a rip and wrap or a hair jig style baits is I like to run a super line. Um, I run a 10 pound super line and then I'll tie about a 36 inch fluorocarbon leader, either 10 or, 10 or 12 pound. Ooh, Jason's hooked up. Oh, a nice one too. Yeah, That's a big nice one. Walleye. Why don't you move that other rod there too? This is a good fish here. Boy, this is a nice Yeah, that's ball. a dandy. We're drifting so fast with this wind. This wind has been a bugger all day. I'm going to see if I can just turn the boat real quick. Okay, I'm going to try to bring it up here. Oh yeah, that's a big one. That's a really big one. Oh! <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna hit spot lock here so we can deal with this fish. That is a that is why people come out to Green Bay, huh? That's what we're looking for. <laughs> She's got some good girth to her. That's a big pre-spawner. Whoa, that is a gorgeous Green Bay walleye. That's a big one. <laughs> that is worth fighting the wind and getting cold for, huh? That is a big female right there. Look at that. Wow. That is a gorgeous fish. Look at that. That is just, that is just beautiful. Whoa. Get that jig out of her mouth here. Just a tungsten jig. Eye candy, just dragging it slow. Yeah, that's, 
That is good. All right. Get this goo in the water. There she goes. About another week, 10 days, she'll be dumping eggs. Whew, got to warm up the hands, but that, that fish will warm me up. Oh, uh, I'll get your heart pumping. Wow. That's what I love about Green Bay. You never know when you set the hook. 